Shepard. But you're dead. There's a series of aims. Um, we we made a list of features and, and improvements across the board that we wanted to implement in Mass Effect 2 uh, based on fan feedback and press feedback. And I'm happy to say that pretty much without exception, we've implemented all those things. So that the experience is really over the top amazing, really high quality. I'm really proud of the team. Um, some of the aspects of things we worked on, big buckets of features, were just amping up the intensity of the shooter experience and improving the combat, making it really precise controls, just a really tight experience across the board, deploying your squad in the battlefield, having moment to moment control of your, of your party, making the AI of the enemies in your party really smart so they, it feels like it's a really challenging experience, and just making it feel like it's a shooter, and it does. It feels as much like it's a shooter as it does a role-playing game. No, we haven't lost anything in the translation in the RPG systems. The cinematic experience, the emotional depth, the characterization, the way the dialogue system works. The things that people love from Mass Effect 1 are definitely back in Mass Effect 2. Um, we've made a host of technology, technical improvements in Mass Effect 2, um, like fast loading times, uh, smooth frame rate, 30 frames a second, uh, seamless texture loading, so it's, you know, it's really smooth and, and uh, um, just beautiful across the board. Um, really amped up the intensity of uh, some of the uh, Uncharted worlds and uh, integrated them more into the main storyline too. So the fidelity is higher, the diversity of content, different art styles is really, is really impressive. You get to go to a lot of cool um, alien worlds that were referenced in the main and first game, but uh, you didn't get to go to. And in Mass Effect 2 you get to check them out and understand them more and actually go to them. Well, you know, I think that's a risk of any time you try and innovate and expand what, it, what a game is, that there's always a risk of, uh, of disenfranchising some of your existing fans. But we've worked really hard to make sure that uh, Mass Effect 2 is as much an, a role-playing game as it is a shooter. So we're not losing anything there, but what we really have done is improve the combat systems, which I think is going to satisfy a lot of fans. It's going to make the game more accessible and ideally pull in some fans who might not have considered playing Mass Effect until now, but I think the RPG fans are from the first game are still going to love it as well. It's also a big area of feedback we got from the fans and press on Mass Effect 1 that we felt, you know, we got to listen to this feedback and take it to heart and always strive to make each game better than the last, so this is one of the ways we're improving Mass Effect uh, as a trilogy. You know, a lot of people bought the original game, so you know, we had a big audience that played it, but I think we're, we're hoping this, you know, and confident that the quality level of Mass Effect 2 and the range of uh, improvements we've made in the content will broaden the audience and make it even more accessible, so we should be able to reach more fans. It's really challenging to, to allow the choices you make in one game in a trilogy to impact the events in the second game. It's hard enough to, when you consider all the permutations and combinations that are in one game, uh, the number of choices we have in a Bioware-style game to make that work just in one game, let alone when you consider it across multiple games in a franchise. But we, from the start, we've always had the idea that Mass Effect is a trilogy, and we built a story arc with that in mind. We considered some of the choices you get to make in the first game and how they would unfold and have what their impact would be in the second game. So if you choose to import a save game from Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2, you're going to have an amazing experience. But it's a standalone adventure. You don't have to have played Mass Effect 1. You can st uh, start it afresh, and then we'll, we'll give you the context and explain uh, you know, the, the, the entry point to the fiction really well. So it's, it's seamless either way. We do not experience fear, but we understand how it affects you. Well, I think we want players to explore Legion and um, the backstory of the Geth, and I don't want to reveal any spoilers, spoiler surprises, but uh, but he's a very intriguing character. I mean, uh, uh, when you ex when you learn more about him, you'll understand a lot more where the Geth come from and what motivates them. Well, I mean, they're they're part of the. So the overarching nemesis that, uh, that you have to, to, to uncover more about and, and try and under, understand why and how human colonies are disappearing and being abducted through the galaxy. So um, they're part of that. And um, I think when you learn more about them, it, you'll, you'll understand why they're pretty intriguing. They're, they're kind of a continuing theme throughout the game and you encounter more of them. They're challenging in combat. They're really diverse. They're really interesting. Um, and it real more would probably spoil some of the spoiler surprises, story surprises for fans. So I want the fans to explore that on their own. And it's not as simple as it might seem at the surface. You know, it, it, you're part of an interesting group. You have to gather a squad of some of the most badass operatives in the galaxy alongside you to defeat this unknown menace. And really, part of the game is uncovering what the menace is and figure out well, during the course of the game who is it that you're facing. Um, the collectors are part of that mix. 
Some are to remember. Some are for kills, you know, good ones. And some are for because, hey, you. She is a little bit psychotic, isn't she? Um, but you know, that's it's, it's, it's provoking an emotional response. It's like a lot of the characters we put in our games, either you're going to love them or you hate them, but uh, either way, they're really interesting to play with. And um, even other companions that, that join you are going to have interesting interactions with those those characters that might be a little more provocative. So there's still optional content and it's there's uncharted worlds, you don't have to do them. But the fidelity of the art is equivalent, pretty much indistinguishable from the main game. And it's really awesome, beautiful scenes as, as a result. And they will improve the outcomes and um, make it less likely that this is a suicide mission if you choose to do some of this optional content. Um, you'll learn, you know, there's a variety of ways that can unfold. Um, you get to explore some of the backstories of your companion characters, optional. Some of the Uncharted worlds are optional. You might uncover new research mods that will improve your weaponry or new abilities, things like that. Um, so there's a range of things that you get to do during in these optional areas that uh, will really change the outcome for you and even change the very ending of the game. And we are planning um, an online, an online enabled experience even though this is a single player game. And the post-release downloadable content plan is all part of that. So we'll reveal more about that over time. I think, if, you know, we'll see what the fans like and then we'll build that kind of content. We have a separate team, just as we do with Dragon Age, we have a separate team that's working on downloadable content plans and building that in parallel with the main game. And I think that if, what we found with downloadable content is to, to really be successful at it, we have to approach it from the beginning as a core part of the game. And that's the idea of, of, of a game as a platform, kind of starting out a, a, a continuation of, of content, whether that be downloadable content or expansions or so on. And um, you have to really invest in the tools, you have to invest in a, a separate team that's kind of moving in parallel with the main game team to, to do downloadable content releases. So we're definitely doing that with Dragon Age. And that's something we're excited about for Mass Effect franchise in the future too. We see these as franchises and we're trying to develop our games out and the worlds like uh, universes like Dragon Age and Mass Effect, yeah we have ambitious plans to continue to expand them not just in games but also in other forms of media. It's important to the fans because I mean ultimately um, it, it expands the universe and allows fans who are really enjoying the experience of being in that universe to continue to stay in it and enjoy it. So I think that's, uh, that's important for that sense.